Good day everyone! My name is Ira Gwen Pilarin and we will discuss about the executives events of Just Dadong Makapagal Senior and we are the group 5 and my members is Bola Romel Christian, Rizalior, Ralph Jacob and Porino Team. So now we will start the personal background. Makapagal's full name is Diosdado Pangan Makapagal Sr. He was a Filipino statesman who served as 9th President of the Philippines, serving from December 13, 1961 to December 30, 1965. He came from a very poor family that led him to go to school barefooted, also known poor boy from Lubao. He was born in September 28, 1910 in San Nicolas, Lubao, Pampanga, and he died on April 21, 1997 at the age of 86 years old in Makati City, Metro Manila. He died of heart failure, pneumonia, and renal complications. This dado has Spanish and Mexican ancestry or mga ninuno and he speaks Spanish fluently. So, the educational background of Diostado was an intelligent boy and excellent in his studies at local public schools. He graduated valedictorian at Lubao Elementary School and salutatorian at Pampanga High School. After his high school life, he proceeds to take pre-law course at University of the Philippines, then enroll at Philippine, Philippine Law School in 1932. He has a scholar and due to lack of money, he supported himself with a part-time job as an accountant. Both graduated at University of the Philippines and summa cum laude of law school at University of Santo Tomas. However, Diosdado was forced to quit schooling after two years due to his poor health conditions nor lack of finances being unable to continue studying. Also, he interested to go to school despite of his life situation or stado sa buhay. He has a this determination to learn and get a degree. The person who helped him to study of law at University of Santo Tomas, Manila was Rogelio de la Rosa, is an actor. His family was poor, hence his nickname is Poor Boy from Lubao. But with the help of Don Honorio Ventura, the, the Secretary of Interior at the time, who financed his education. After receiving his Bachelor of Law's degree, he finished his law degree and he also a top notcher in bar examination in 1936, when he took the bar examination in the same year with a rating of 89.95%. He, he studied law and graduated in University of Santo Tomas and pursued and earned the postgraduate degree of Doctor of Civil Law degree in 1947 and PhD in Economics in 1957, the same university. His dissertation had Imperatives of Economic Development in the Philippines as the title. So now, the family background. Diosdado's parents' name is Roman Napangan and Urbano Makapagal. And Diosdado is the third of five children and they came from a poor family. His first wife, in 1938, he married Porita de la Rosa, which is kapatid ni Rogelio de la Rosa. Then got two children named Maria Shaldo Makapagal Salgado and Arturo Makapagal. Porita died in 1943. After his wife died, he married Evangelina Makarai or Eva on May 5, 1946 from Pangasinan and had two children which is Maria Gloria Makapagal Arroyo who would become President of the Philippines and Diosdado Makapagal Jr. Diosdado's family earned extra income by raising pigs and accommodating birders in their home. Due to his roots in poverty, Makapagal would later become affectionately known as um, Poor Boy from Lubao. Makapagal was also a reputed poet in the Spanish language, language although his poet work was eclipsed by his political biography. Career before becoming president. So here's the first one. Lawyer in the Philippine government after passing the bar examination. So after receiving his Bachelor of Laws degree in 1936, she was admitted to the bar, topping the 1936 bar examination with a score of 89.95%. Took a lot of job in the government. Early career in government um, service in 1941, Makapagal worked as a legal assistant to President Quezon and as professor of law in the University of San 
Benito Tomas. Position as President Manuel L. Quezon's Legal Assistant in Malacanang Talas. Makapagal attained worldwide distinction in 1951. So, makapagal attained worldwide distinction in 1951. As a chairman of the Philippine UN delegation, he conducted a debate with Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Vyshinsky. He is also known for shifting the countries of Independence Day from July 4 to June 12, commemorating the day President Emilio Aguinaldo. Addressing Congress in 1962, he formulated the objectives of his socio-economic programs. On January 21, 1962, Makapagal abolished the econ economic controls that had been in operation since 1948. The product of his concern for the improvised majority was the Land Reform Code of August 8, 1963, which sought to replace the abused and unjust tenancy system. Makapagal initiated the Manila Accord of July 31, 1963, signed by himself, President Sukarno of Indonesia, and Abdul Rahman of Malaya. Makapagal prided himself in being the conscience of the common man. He failed in preventing his administration from being wrecked by Stonehill of Scandal of 1962, which revealed massive government corruption and racketeering that involved almost the whole bureaucracy and Congress. Campaigns, strategies, and election results of Yus Dado Makapagal. Presidency from 1961 to 1965. In the 1961 presidential election, Makapagal ran against Garcia's re-election team in his campaign to become the president. He promised to end corruption and appeal to the electorate as a common man from humble beginnings himself. He defeated the incumbent president with a 55% to 45% margin. This Dado Makapagal was part of the Liberal Party with a total of 3,554,840 votes on his name. In the presidential race, majority of Luzon and Visayas was on this Dado Makapagal's side in the election for most of his votes came from it. But let's move on to the policies priority bills signed by our President this Dado Makapagal. First, we have the Republic Act 3512, an act creating a fisheries commission defining its powers, duties, and functions, appropriating funds. Second, we have the Republic Act number 3518, an act creating the Philippine Veterans Bank and for other purposes. Third, we have the Republic Act number 3844, an act to ordain the Agricultural Land Reform Code and to institute land reforms in the Philippines. And fourth, we have the Republic Act number 4166, and now changing the date of Philippine Independence Day from July 4 to June 12, and declaring July 4 as Philippine Republic Day. Fifth, we have the Republic Act Number 4180, and amending Republic Act Number 602, otherwise known as the Minimum Wage Law, by raising the minimum wage for certain workers and for other purposes. Addition to this are the domestic policies, socio-economic socio -economic program, the removal of controls and the restoration of free enterprise was intended to provide only the fundamental setting in which Makapagal could work out economic and social progress. And lastly, we have the anti-corruption drive. One of Makapagal's major campaign pledges had been to clean out the government's corruption. Uh, that had proliferated under the former President Garcia. Uh, the, administra the administration also openly feuded with Filipino businessmen like Fernando Lopez and Eugenio Lopez, brothers who had controlling interests in the several large business businesses in the Philippines. Former World War II, G.I. Harry Stonehill settled in the Philippines and rose to prominence as an American businessman. He managed to create a business empire that is said to be worth around 50 million U.S. dollars in less than 20 years while he was living in the Philippines. He established 18 businesses throughout the nation, including tobacco and glass manufacturing that were both innovative and profitable. High-ranking government officials, including future President Ferdinand Marcos, President Justado Macabagal, and former President Carlos P. Hernandez, are, uh, are involved in the scandal. Additional Philippine officials were also complicit. Macabagal was a very 
popular articulate and charismatic president, no one would have thought of his involvement in the Stone Hill mess. One of his platform of government was to fight graft and corruption. He promised to eliminate officials who stole money from the government. He promised his own version of Matuwid na daan. A quick review of history revealed that the Stone Hill cage which occurred during the Estado Makapagal presidency caused turbulence and embarrassment. The investigation revealed that Makapagal had some ish some connection to Stone Hill. This is why the public yearned for justice so much. Many wanted him impeached. During the raid, a Stone Hill Blue Book was discovered. It included a list of top, top government officials he bribed. According to reports, the list included President Makapagal and his prede predecessor, President Garcia, as well as many members of the ruling Liberal Party and opposition members of the Nationalista Party. The Blue Book revealed that Stonehill ran a corruption network that reached all levels of government, as in the case of Napoles. President Makapagal foresaw what was to come. If Stonehill was forced to testify about the scandal, he will be implicated and impeached so faster than lightning. Makapagal had Stonehill deported on charges of tax invasion, economic sabotage, blackmail, and public official corruption. He also let go of Secretary Jokno. The Stonehill scandal shattered Makapagal administration and remained ghost of the past to this day. Legacy In his capacity as president, Makapagal sought to stifle corruption and graft to boost the Philippine economy. So this Diario Makapagal in 1910 to 1997 was the fifth president of the Republic of the Philippines. He was instrumental in initiating and executing the Land Reform Code, which was designed to solve the old centuries-old land tenancy problem, the principal cause of the communist guerrilla movement in central Luzon. He also liberalized foreign exchange and import limitations, put the peso on the free currency exchange market, and passed the nation's first land reform law. So, um, while President Makapagal worked to suppress graft and graft and corruption and to stimulate the Philippine economy, he placed the peso on the free currency exchange market and encouraged to, cur to curb income tax evasion, particularly by the wealthiest family, which cost the treasury millions of pesos yearly. To ameliorate the plight of the Filipino pleasant in the face of vast population growth, Makapagal Institute, a public land and clearance program to make new farmlands available for immediate use. Country Vital Statistic GDP Makapagal subsequent reform efforts were thwarted by the nationalists who controlled both the House of Representatives and the Senate at the time. Despite this, Makapagal was able to maintain consistent economic progress with an annual GDP growth averaging 5.53% from 1962 to 1965. Inflation During the past year, the consumer price index increased by 6.7% in Manila and by 4.3% outside Manila. Prices in the Philippines have risen so slowly that according to a world survey conducted by the Associated Press in November 1962, are second to the lowest in the world. This was the vital sign statistic during President Makapagal term. Income. The prices level have been stabilized and real incomes are rising through the increase in production and job opportunities brought about by the socio-economic development program and the Emergency Employment Administration. The achievement of relative price stability was largely due to a rise in domestic production as well as the activity of the Rice and Corn Administration and National Marketing Corporation. The administration is observant of monetary and fiscal prudence as a precautionary measure to the control and to keep the exchange rate in check was a major stabilizing factor. And this is our references and that ends for today's discussion. Have a nice day and thank you for listening.